I have been using the um, e-propulsion um, Spirit One Plus for a season now, and I did a small uh, introductory video when we first got it. This is just the battery, obviously. But since we we have been using it, uh, I now feel like I can give you uh, a full review on um, on how how it how good it is or how bad it is. The things that are good and the things that are bad. It seems like most videos I see people get them for free. I don't get shit for free, so <laughs> yeah, I bought it and I I paid for it full retail price. But so uh, maybe my opinion will not be as as wonderful as most. But anyway, let's let's get to it. I took off out today to 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 do this. Uh, not today, but the morning. And this morning, my objective is to use the the motor uh, to show you basically how it works and um, and to do a review on it. So the the idea is um, we have about five knots of wind, which is almost no wind at all, which is fine. And we are currently here, this red dot, this app is Navionics, in case you don't know. And I want to go explore this, um, this region right here, uh, which is uh, a river and um, it's called Caldeirão de Troia. Uh, the distance from here to there, so to the entrance, it's about two nautical miles, and then going in another one, so that makes it about three. Uh, so it's a round trip of about six miles. And remember, this is electric, so six miles, it's. It, it's not that far, but it's not that close. So let's see how the battery does. Um, one thing to mention is I have no trepidation on on range uh, if the battery is full. Now, if the battery was half, then maybe. I don't know. But yeah, then I would have some trepidation. Uh, this is a tidal area because it's Portugal, so we have the Atlantic and it, yeah, I know it's tidal. And I'm obviously being a smart guy. I'm going with the tide, going down, and then when I'll be coming back, I'm coming with the tide as well. There's no point fighting the, the tides when you don't have to because this, this place gets about a two knot tide. And if you're fighting a two knot tide with a motor that likes to go three knots, it will take you a long time. And instead of two miles, you will do like eight just to get back. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. I forgot to put the plug in. And, well, let's start with one of the bad things about the propulsion Spirit 1.0. You cannot achieve enough speed to self-bail. Normally, if you have a gasoline engine or whatever, you will be able to go way faster, even if it's just like a three horsepower, you will be able to go way faster than with the e-propulsion. And what you do then is as you're moving forward, you open your baler down here and there is low pressure on the outside of the hull, which means that the water that's inside the hull will self-bail and usually there's a diaphragm valve on these things and what that does is it lets the water it 
lets the water get out but not come in. Now the problem with the diaphragm is that if it's in place and I hoist the boat and try to bail using the gravity, using the inclination of the boat, I can't do it because the, the, um, the diaphragm doesn't quite open easily, so there's always a bunch of water uh, inside. So I took the diaphragm out and what I do is I close it and open it as needed. So I open it when I exit the boat, when it stands on the, on the dinghy davits, it sets a little bit of an inclination so it, it uh, allows the water to get out. But there's no self bailing with this uh, with this setup. It, it just doesn't work. Another quite difficult thing if you're alone. It's not difficult. It's just the battery is very heavy. But it floats, so that's a good thing. We are on our way and I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? You can. Using uh, about 200 watts it says we will have almost seven hours of range uh, at this speed. Seven hours of time using 200 watts. Now I find it to be okay. It's not very inaccurate. It's just not a, a good way to predict things. Because power usage changes a lot. But yeah, you know, electric vehicles have that issue. They cannot, they are very bad at estimated, estimating ranges. So anyway. The wake is pretty good, normal at this uh, speed, and uh, yeah. One of the things that I found, or that I find about about, uh, I don't know if it's all electric uh, motors, but at least yeah, it's got to be all of them. So we are doing currently. Can you see it? You know, I can't see it in the display, so I'm I'm assuming you can. We are doing 3.5, 3.6 knots using 200 watts of power. Now, yeah, sometimes it says four, but you can see that. So I will increase the power. Second. So now we are doing uh, 300 knots. Uh, 300 uh, watts and the speed is now 4, 3.8, 3 3.9, 4 so 0.4 of an increase and we are using way much power now let's see 500 watts okay, we are using 500 watts and the speed has gone to 4.1, 4.7, 4.3, so let, let it average a bit. So yeah, around 4.2. Have to course correct a little bit. Four point two, four point three. If I go full on, this is one thousand watts full on. Now I'm doing about five knots, maybe. Sometimes it hits five. Anyway, what's my point? My point is that you need to go slow with these motors. Because 
if you're doing 200 watts you're doing 3.5 3.6 knots increasing to 1000 watts gets you to almost five it's really inefficient that way uh, the boat that are uh, the dinghy it's a rib uh, so it has a good smooth bottom and uh, it's a 310 from zodiac so it's not that small it has a good water line uh, but yeah well oh, the views are not even looking at the views but yeah about power usage that's one thing that you need to to consider it um, you should you basically will only use 1000 watts if you have some kind of emergency and you need to move a little bit faster because otherwise you are much better off just putting in like 250 watts and sitting back and relax and wait for wait for the trip to happen it's <laughs> just like sailing the faster you try to go the slower it seems like you're going because as we all know if you're going from point A to point B, the wind is coming from point B, always. Anyway. We are approaching the bar of the Caldera. It's low tide. And I hope there's a way in. I cannot spot it from here. But since it's low tide and we are at risk of hitting things in the bottom what you can do there's a latch over here and there's a latch over here if you pull this one and then pull this one up it gets into that position so now if you hit something the motor will just flip back because it's not held in place but beware, if you do this, you should not reverse. It's a little thing, but it's, it's quite clever. Now, another thing, looking at this, the motor has been in the sun and at the mercy of seawater for a season now. And there is absolutely no rust on the metal parts. I have newer stuff made from stainless, supposed 3 uh, 316 sta stainless at the boat that are already rusted. So whatever they are using, it's good metal. Well, as it turns out, um, it's very shallow here. So the motor is too long to be used here, it just crack on the bottom. It has good protection against hitting, hitting things. That uh, metal part in the... Because um, I've hit the ground <laughs> more times than I would like to admit. And it worked fine. So yeah, that's, that's good protection. The propeller is still pretty good. Well, since we're here, literally waiting for the tide to turn, let's talk a little bit about the propulsion. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that it's kind of based on, on a traditional outboard. Don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. It is what it is. There, there's these new uh, electric uh, motors Sam Holmes the he's another he's a youtuber I like to see his shit sometimes but lately it's become just like an advert <laughs> the the whole movie is about him pushing some weird thing that he got for free and it gets tiring but anyway enough about the rant so he just got this uh, outboard which is like a long pipe and there's a propeller at the end of the pipe that thing is ridiculous. It's just stupid. I mean, come on. Anyway, 
So this this one is um, it's modeled uh, on a on a normal on an old fashioned outboard. Um, the thing that I, I I wish that well it, on the side here you have this lever that holds it up let's pull it down but as you see as I pull it down it, it hits the bottom like instantly but it's not gonna be a problem well, maybe maybe it is a problem I don't know well one thing that you can do with it is you can pull the tiller to the front and then you can drop it so it doesn't use as much uh, space and the um, the bracket that holds it to the to the dinghy is very sturdy and very well made. The thing that I don't really like is this um, these connections here. I have some grease in them to prevent uh, to prevent oxidation or but this is a maritime environment. And the thing is, you will all, you will be putting him on, taking it off, putting him on, taking it off all the time. Not just because of charging. Uh, if you go to the beach, for instance, or if you go somewhere, you're not gonna leave your battery <laughs> on the dinghy. And for me, that is one of the biggest problems with this um, with this setup is that once you want to go somewhere you are you will pretty much be lugging the battery with you and it's heavy i can't even lift it like this it's it needs two hands to come off for me the biggest problem is that uh, th that's the one uh, these batteries are extremely expensive and people know that they are extremely expensive if they see one and it's unattended well you might get lucky but then again you might not so I pulled the motor up because it was killing me that I was dragging on the bottom <laughs> I just can't stand it it's probably not gonna hurt it because it was just lightly but still uh, this is the charging port, two pin, normal charging port. And there's two little pins inside, I don't know. Nah, I'm, nah, it's probably just two pin and that's a, a reflection. So it looks like you could probably charge it from uh, any charger. I It comes with um, a 220 uh, or a 110 charger in the box. So the way I charge it, is in the boat using the inverter which also presents another issue which is normally you use your dinghy during the day so let's say you get to an anchorage or you are at anchorage uh, and you decide you're going to the beach and then uh, have some lunch maybe a little hike and then come back so you spend the day out of the boat well that's when your main boat is getting all the solar power so then you come back and you plug it in and this takes forever to charge because it has one kilowatt the battery has 1.1 kilowatt hours so it needs a lot of juice to be replenished um so yeah that's something you have to deal with because if you plug it in when you get back and there's no sun you will be depleting the batteries on your main boat to charge this one battery which is just not efficient and you don't want to do that um so you will have to plan when when do you want to charge it um another thing that that needs your attention is that the basically the cells the battery cells they don't like to be fully discharged or fully charged if you keep this thing fully charged for a long long time it's gonna degrade the, the cells inside so maybe 
don't fully charge it because the the range is is pretty good so you could just charge it like to 80 percent and then discharge it to 40 and then charge it to 80 and that way you will get the biggest life that you can out of it that being said i have no complaints so far especially because it's a large battery just like in uh, the electric cars the size of the battery is very very important because let's say you're a person that only does uh, 10 20 kilometers or miles or whatever uh, from by, to every day with an electric car that's all you do so you think to yourself well I might as well get an electric car with a small battery because I don't use it that much so it's it's good enough for the day but the problem is if you get an electric car with a small battery you will be charging almost every day so every day you have you cycle the batteries and the cycles they get they add up if you get like a tesla with a 500 mile range or whatever you will be charging that car once a week once every two weeks maybe and the, the cycles are way less so the same thing with the uh, electric um, outboards in this case which is because you have a big battery we only charge it like I don't know every week sometimes less so the cycles are not uh, accumulating these new ones that you get that have like a 250 watt hour battery you will be cycling that thing like crazy but they count on it they count on you uh, spending and ruining the battery so they can sell you another battery they, they like money it's uh, i like money too but yeah you know you know what i mean i'll probably cut this out <laughs> anyway well let's try something different i don't like to talk to camera directly but the other day someone put in the comments how can i trust you if you don't talk directly to me or something like that so here we go what about price the price is is a big down for sure but you have to take into account that if you have one of these outboards you have the possibility of not having to have gasoline aboard your boat now for me that's huge i don't want to deal with gasoline aboard the boat what the hell is that thing Holy crap! I think I found your aliens or UFOs or whatever. It looks like some kind of veto. I better freaking. Oh shit, it isn't hovering like that. It is probably very windy and I apologize for that, but we just saw that uh, drone land because I heard it. And that brings us to noise or the lack of it. This thing is virtually silent, which means that when you're going along, you don't have a belching engine screaming at you all the time, which is nice, but it's also safer because I can hear things a mile away. If there's another boat or if there's a, another, um, like for instance, a drone or something, you can hear them because you are not making a racket. So that's a great plus for the Spirit Plus. We are back at the mothership. And we have used two of the ten um, indicators. Um, 
the way this works is you have this uh, little sign over here which indicates that the puck the dead man switch is not in when you put it on it goes away you can press the select button to show you either voltage or how long you have remaining on your battery um, under that load and then you have the power switch which you press for three seconds to turn on and for three seconds to turn off let's go inside about charging so this is the charger that it comes with these are the specs pause if you need to read anything um, this is the charging port like I said it has two pins and this is the charging cable now I have Victron in the boat so we can see exactly how much it will pull from the battery bank so using the smart shant we can see that we are using now uh, 5 watts from the bank uh, which is basically nothing the reason is that all of the house loads are being run by the solar power uh, it is after 6 so there's not much solar but yeah the solar po power is keeping up with the um, with the demand so the battery state of charge is at 100% so when I connect the charger here a red light goes on over there a red light goes on over there you can hear a little bit of a hum coming from this thing don't know if you can hear it yeah you probably won't and we are now taking from the battery from the main battery about 200 watts or uh, 15 amps so this is going through an inverter I do not have one of these that connects directly to 12 volts I might get one and if I do I'll let you know if it's better and or if it's more efficient um, so I just plugged it in so now we can look at trends and we can look at current and I can tell exactly when it started so I'll be able to tell exactly when it finishes and I'll let you know how long it took to charge it's full now so it has a blue light over here and a green light in the adapter uh, it is now 8.48 and we started right here and it was um, at six, six and a quarter, six fifteen. So it took just under three hours, two and a half hours. Well, now you know. If you do a trip like we did today to fully charge up the battery again, it will take you about two and a half hours. Don't know how useful that information is, but anyway, you have it. Conclusion time. Now you know exactly how the motor works. Um, you know the pros and cons, at least the ones that I could remember. If you have any questions, leave them down in the, in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you if I can. Or if I don't, most times people just read the questions and reply because, you know, that's how community works. Well. The trip we did today was a total of six nautical miles. Look at that. Just as predicted. Um, it all went well. It all went smoothly. No noise. No gasoline. Um, but slow as hell. So yeah. I guess that's the biggest trade-off. Would I buy it again? As I said before, I bought it with my own money. Uh, no sponsors. No bullshit like that. And yet, still, yes, I would buy it again, just because I don't want to have gasoline aboard. That's the basically the, the, the reason. 
all of the other little things like uh, it's it's not noisy and uh, you can use it you know all of those things are nice they, but they are not the reason for buying it the reason for buying it uh, in my opinion is that you will not have to deal with gasoline and the starting procedure of a gas outboard so yeah well that's it uh, I don't know what else to say looks like this is the place where ships come to die there's a bunch of wrecks here one seems like it had two engines. Oh, more! Or is this from a different wreck? There's one... Two... Three... I hope this doesn't collapse on me. <laughs> 